The time is 6 p.m. and the special called meeting of the City Council of Denison, Texas is now in session. Our invocation this evening will be brought by Jean Emerson, pastor of New Beginning Fellowship. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Father, for this time together. And Father, what a special event. We just ask your presence to be here. We thank you, Father, for our, our city leaders, and we thank you for those that are in, in positions, Father, to govern over us. And we ask your blessing upon them, upon this council tonight, in this meeting. We pray that your peace would be with us. And Father, we thank you for those that are, that are exiting and those that are coming in. And we thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing in our midst. So Father, for this city that we live in, we ask your blessing upon it, and we ask your blessing upon this meeting, and we thank you for these things. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, sir. This evening, our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Heather Whitney. Heather is a veteran of the U.S. Army, and she served during the War on Terror. Terror era, that's hard to say. <coughs> Heather, thank you for your service. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On our Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas one, one state, under God, one and indivisible. At this time, I'm going to ask Council Member Adams and Council Member bittersweet night. We have two people who have served this community well over the last six years for Council Member Adams and for the last three by Council Member Greenleaf. But prior to that, he served six more years. So he's served this council a total of nine years. Teresa brought to this council a very Unique perspective. She came as a female small business owner. She's the mother of public servants. She loves this community and she has shown that throughout her service to the to this council and to our community. And I can tell you that I am personally going to miss her very, very much as she contributed so much she always had a voice when it came to what we needed to do next in our community. So, Teresa, it is with a great deal. Okay, Chris, we're going to have to learn that we have to put a piece of paper under these. Aha, uh -huh, I got it. <laughs> this says, presented to Teresa Adams, in grateful appreciation for your years of dedicated and diligent service to the residents of Denison, as a member of the City Council of the City of Denison, Texas. Teresa, thank you so much. And I'm not shaking your hand, so <laughs> get up. <laughs> and oh my goodness, how I am gonna miss Council Member Greenleaf sitting next to me on that dais. He brings such a colorful history to this council. You know, if you've not had the opportunity to hear Obi's stories, well, all I can tell you is now that he's no longer a, a member of the council and I'm not going to get to have him, let's take him to lunch and listen <laughs> to his stories because Obi brings such an a perspective to this council. Obi, I always knew that if anybody was hesitant about seconding the motion, 
you were going to be right in there. So, and you know, that means a lot when you're trying to run a meeting. So, Obi, thank you so much for your service to this community and your plaque group presented to Obi Greenleaf in grateful appreciation for your years of dedicated and diligent service to the residents of Denison as a member of the City Council of Denison, Texas. Oh, I just, it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve with this fine uh, council and Team Denison great people at Team Denison. We've got a great leader at the helm with Janet and Bobby and uh, great things coming to Denison. So I appreciate the opportunity to serve. Well, it's been a great honor to serve the city of Denison and all the great past mayors and all, all the wonderful people from Denison. God and God. Thank you. In each council meeting, we set aside time for any citizen who wishes to speak on any action item listed on the current agenda. Uh, prior to getting to this point, you must fill out a request to speak card. Ms. Valentine, do we have any requests to speak? Therefore, there will be no public comment. <clears throat> item 4A, receive a report, hold a discussion, and take action on an ordinance canvassing the election returns and declaring the results of the general election held in the city of Denison on May 1st, 2021, for the purpose of electing council members to single member district one, place one, single mem member district <laughs> two, place two, and place seven, mayor at large, Ms. Wallentine. Good evening, mayor and council. I'm happy to bring to you tonight the canvas report for the election. Um, as you know, the city council ordered and called the general election for May 1st for the purpose of electing council members for place one, place two, and the mayor at large. Um, notices of election were given by the city and the Grayson County Elections Administrator as required by state law. And the election was duly held on May 1st uh, between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and in conformity with the election laws of the state of Texas. The results of said election, including returns of early ballots, showed that there were cast at said election the following total valid and legal votes. Single member district place one, Michael Courtright, 149. Single member district two, place two, Kevin Lynn Arrington, 32. James R. Thorne, 143. Place seven, mayor at large, Janet Gott, 573. Al Gilberti, 30 and Matt Blackshear, 89. Staff recommends approval of the results of the election as canvassed and tabulated. Questions for Ms. Wallentine? A motion? Mayor, I move to adopt the ordinance canvassing the election returns and declaring the results of the general election held in the city of Denison on May 1st, 2021 for the purpose of electing council members to single member district one, place one, single member district two, place two, Seven, Mayor there is a motion by Councilmember Hander and a second by Councilmember Greenlee. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item 4B, receive a report, hold a discussion, and administer statements of officer, oath of office, and deliver certificates of election to newly elected officials to single member district one, place one, single member district two, place two, and place seven, Mayor at large. Ms. Wallentine. Well, now that we've adopted the canvas, the ordinance, the most important piece, now we get to do the fun part. Um, after all early votes, mail-in votes, and election day votes were counted and confirmed by the Grayson County Elections Board, Michael Courtright was unopposed and declared the winner for single member district one, place one. James R. Thorne was declared the winner for single member district two, place two, and Janet Gott was declared the winner for at-large, place seven. 
Staff recommends administering statements of officer, oaths of office, and delivery of the certificates of election. Questions for Ms. Wallentine. A motion? Mayor, I move to approve administering the statements of officer, oaths of office, and delivery of certificates of election to Michael Courtright, James Thorne, and Janet Gott. Second. Second. There is a motion by Council Member Crawley and a second by Council Member <clears throat> Doty. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. So if I could get Mayor Gott, Mr. Court, Dr. Courtright, and uh, Pastor Thorne up front, we'll do the You guys want to stand there or do you want to move over here for the administering of your oaths? I'll get out of the way so you guys can face up there. Uh, front and center looks yep. good to me. Okay. Do you want in any particular order? However, however you guys want to stand. Okay. If you each would raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I James R. Cohen. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear, swear that I will faithfully execute. And I will faithfully execute the duties of the office, the duties the duties of the of office. office. as a member of the city council, as a member of the city council for the city of Denison, Texas, for the city of Denison, Texas, and will to the best of my ability, and will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the constitution and laws, the constitution laws of the United States, of the United States, and of this state. So help me God. And this state. So help me God. Congratulations. All I can say, gentlemen, welcome to the council, and you have big shoes to fill. Okay. All right. Item 4C, receive a report, hold a discussion, and take action on appointing a mayor pro tem. Mayor, I make a, I move to nominate Brian Hander to serve as mayor pro tem for one year. Second. Second. There is a motion by council... Mayor Pro Tem Doty and a second by Council Member Crawley. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Congratulations, Mayor Pro Tem Hander. Item 5A, receive a report, hold a discussion regarding acquisition of John Spanville property and current estimated cost of remediation. Mr. Kai. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to give you an update on the John Mansville project. I think everyone that's been involved in this project knows that it's somewhat complicated. So I wanted to give an update and I appreciate the opportunity. 
back in August, I was before this council uh, with a recommendation for us to move forward on purchasing that property. At that time, we had received multiple bids on the remediation of the property, and I brought my environmental consultant with me to report to you that the estimated cost to remediate that property was approximately $2 million. Um, since that time, that was many, many moons ago, we've continued to grind on the process to actually close on the property. But as we got closer to what we thought was a closing date, uh, I revisited the low bid to make sure that the bid was valid and received the same bid from the same group. The second time, a couple more months went by and we thought we were closer to closing on the property. Then I called for that group to meet on site with the Department of Health. The Department of Health oversees anything regarding asbestos. So we met on site and it didn't take very long for them to explain how they were gonna do the remediation and demolition and the Department of Health clearly, flatly said, you cannot do it that way. And the way they proposed to do it was just push the building down then pick up the transite sheeting, which would be shattered, busted up, to scoop it up and load it up and use the normal protocol to transport asbestos. Um, I guess I took it for granted that they knew that that's how you had to handle that transite because the companies that we had the bid for are well known. Uh, been doing business in Texas for quite some time. Obviously, they didn't know that. So their bid was invalid. So since that time, uh, I've engaged another local individual that has been helping uh, really define the scope of work or what it's going to take to get that building and that property remediated. And through several weeks and several meetings on site with multiple different subcontractors, to remediate that property, you're going to have three subcontractors. You've got a demolition crew, you've got an asbestos removal crew, and then you have a monitoring crew. So the bids come as a package generally with all those subs under one, one bid package. So we've split that up and met with three different asbestos removal companies, different demolition companies, to incrementally get the cost uh, of what the real cost to remediate the property could be. And what we ended up with was an estimate of about $6 million. So that's the bad news, $6 million possibly. Uh, we don't know exactly what the cost is gonna be till we go back out to the bid with a bid document with a very detailed scope of work, which we're probably 90% finished with that scope of work. But I wanna let the council know that it's not 2 million. It could be up to 6 million. Now that's the bad news. The good news is we applied for an EDA grant that was prior to the August meeting when I came before you, and we were given a, a verbal that uh, we applied for a $3 million grant, which we would match a million five, and the EDA would match the other one, million five. So we were given an early verbal that they were going to match 500000 up front to do planning to make sure the site was developable and redevelopable and sellable, which is sort of normal. I get that. And then the so that would be a $500,000 match from us and uh, 500 from EDA. When that process takes place and we end up with uh, all the planning, future planning ideas for the site, there's obviously other monies coming down to EDA, so they're going to be invested in that, and we believe that uh, once that, that portion's done, we can reapply for that additional million and I think that money would be available on October 1st. So there's a p potential that we're, we're going to get, I mean, a million five to offset some of that six million. In addition to that, the other good news is we've worked directly, not through the contractors in this case, we just went directly to TCEQ and the Department of Health um, to discuss ways that we can do the remediation and reduce the cost from the six million. And both entities have been very uh, helpful and uh, given us some ideas on how the demolition can occur and how the remediation can occur that will actually reduce the cost from the six million that we've got the original uh, second uh, second estimate from. So that's really good news and with all that in mind I think everyone's aware of what's going on with the property values in the county. Uh, we're seeing that from major developers. We have several that have already approached us about that property 
having interest in redeveloping it. So we know it's a marketable property, and we know the value of that property continues to go up. So that's all the good news. Uh, we've, uh, the, on behalf of the Denison Development Board, uh, we spent a lot of time working on this, uh, discussing it, what's the best for the community, and it's on behalf of the DDF Board, your economic development entity, I'm here to say that they recommend that we proceed with this because this is something that's important to the community to remove that blighted site and redevelop it and bank it to something um, that we'll be proud of. So the cost is a factor, but I think we can, uh, at the end of the, it may take longer than a year or two to recoup our costs, but long term, we do believe that it's a viable project for the community. So on the, what's your timeline now as far as progressing through? I know you're talking about extra money or additional money on October. So where are we on meeting with these contractors? I mean, you've been doing it, so what's your next steps? The next step is to finish the scope of work that details exactly how much asbestos is out there, how much steel is out there, the value of the steel. Um, just really definitive numbers of what has to be done and then mesh that with both state agencies and what they require and how it's required to be done. And that's what will go out in the scope of work to, we had four bids the first time, so we'll go out to three of those former bidders and maybe a couple more. And then when we get that back, we'll have the real number. Thank you. And the timing on that, well, first of all, we still don't own the property. We're still negotiating on a weekly basis Everything is done. We just can't seem to get a closing date. Uh, it could be, could be this week, could be next week, could be six months from now, because we've been working on this for 30 years to get it closed, and we're, we're close, but it has not happened. But the absolute next step is to get that scope of work out and really uh, get the, the cost defined. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That was an information only item and does not require action from the council. Uh, there being no further business to come before this body, the time is 623 and we are adjourned.